Welcome to the Worship of God at First Church of Christ in Glastonbury, Connecticut. We are an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, which means this. You are welcome here. You are safe to sing or laugh or shed a tear. We love you just the way you are, so have no fear. You're welcome here if you are happy or sad, old or young, confused or inspired, full of faith or full of doubt, poetic or pragmatic, or a combination of all of these. You are welcome in our community, no matter your religion, ethnicity, who you love, where you grew up, how much money you have, or the color of your skin. For here we proclaim that each person is valuable, loved, and essential. This is a place of peace and grace where all God's children have a home. God reign will come and God's will be done when all are loved and no one stands alone. You are welcome here. All are welcome here. Welcome to this worship of God here at First Church in Glastonbury, Connecticut. We hope this time of worship gives you a sense of connectedness despite being in our own separate spaces. We pray that this time of worship reminds you that you are loved no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. First Church is an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and we are so glad you are here with us. Perhaps this is your first time with us, or maybe you've been here for decades. Regardless, we are blessed by you, and we are blessed by this community. There are so many things going on at First Church, and we invite you to get involved. And we are blessed to belong to a community where we openly share our time, our treasure, and our gifts with one another and with the world. During this season of Epiphany, we hope and pray that you continue to feel God's light and love in your lives each and every day. And now to set the context for this service. During last weekend's wonderful worship, celebrating Epiphany, Kate invited you to cut out a star and to pick a word a word for 2021, a word that would be your star gift for the coming year. Well, that Sunday evening, Kate and I received a delightful email from a church member who'd cut out her star and chosen the word pivot, pivot. Could there be a more appropriate word for 2021? and for that matter, for the year now past, pivot. We all have had to constantly pivot at home, at work, at school. In nearly all of our activities, we have had to pivot because of the coronavirus. And without, without a doubt, we will need to continue pivoting in the year ahead. This past Tuesday morning, your worship staff met by Zoom for our weekly planning meeting for this service, but also for the services in the weeks and months ahead. The service you are now watching, pre-recorded on Friday evening, was planned to uplift the liturgical Sunday of the baptism of Christ. Remembering the powerful service of last year when Kate invited all who were present to come forward at the end of the service to dip their hand in some water and then to take a rock or a stone. The stone was to be a reminder of your baptismal promises as well as your reminder of your faith, a faith that offers support during life's most challenging times but also a faith that calls us to be obedient to God. To prepare you for the end of this service, we invite you to have some water nearby for one when we will once again invite you to reaffirm your baptismal vows. Also, some of you might be able to retrieve the stone, the rock that you received last year. That's the planning that occurred this past Tuesday morning. 
than Wednesday happened. Time to pivot? Well, yes and no. You see, I was planning for the sermon for this weekend to be on a more personal level, how our faith is the rock that can get each of us through life's personal challenges, like the challenges posed to us by the pandemic, isolation, loneliness, sadness, loss, grief, disruption, and fear. Then, as we say, Wednesday happened. Time to pivot? Well, yes, but maybe I would say no. Our faith is still our rock. Our faith is still the rock solid, solid foundation for our lives. Our faith is still the rock to guide our lives, to work for justice and dignity for all people and for peace and freedom in our own country and around the world. Our faith, as affirmed in our baptismal promises, always calls us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And so after Wednesday, it seems clear that our nation desperately needs people of faith, like the people of First Church, to continue to stand on that rock of justice, peace, and freedom for all of God's children. Let us now join together in our prayer of invocation, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, today we renew the symbols of our commitment to you and your commitment to us. Through the water of baptism, our relationship with you is strengthened as the old is washed away and the way forward is illuminated. And we are also reminded that you are a rock, a rock of strength, help, and love throughout our lives. You are the fount of all our blessings. You are the rock to which we cling. With your comfort and guidance, we begin again a life committed to joy in serving you, love for others, peace and patience in suffering, goodness in evil times, and gentleness in the face of opposition. Strengthen our hearts and minds so that we might walk more bravely on the path you lay so clearly in the example of your Son, in whose name we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For this service with a theme of rocks and the water of baptism, we have chosen as our opening hymn, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. The water of our baptism is truly a fount of blessing. But what about a rock? Now, it's not often that you need a dictionary or a Bible dictionary, for that matter, as you sing a hymn. The second verse of this hymn begins, Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come. Raise my Ebenezer? Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, as we will hear in our scripture lesson from Samuel, when the Israelites were about to be overrun in battle by the Philistines, Samuel confessed his, his faith in God. So God raised a mighty voice against the Philistines and threw them into confusion, and they were routed by Israel. In thanksgiving to God for this protection, Samuel placed some stones and called them Ebenezer, which means stones of help, recognizing the support that God offers to us as we face the Philistines in our lives. Let us now join and sing our opening hymn. Oh, 
to the coast of Maine. Maine is a state um, in, the, in our country, the United States, that is up north from us. Um, we live in Connecticut and Maine, we would drive five hours to get where we would go for vacation. And while we were there, we loved to do all sorts of fun things, right? Eat ice cream, eat, eat lobster, um, and we would go and walk the beach a lot. Now, the beaches in Maine are different than the beaches down here. The coast of Maine, the beach area, are very rocky there, okay? They also have some sand, but we would go to the rocky places and we would find little crabs and snails and sea glass and seashells and rocks. The rocks were very special because we would try and find rocks that had a mark all the way on the outside. And we would call those lucky rocks. Mrs. Bear, do you have any rocks? Oh, good, you do, here's one. <gasps> this is a rock from Maine that we got on our family vacation years ago. And you can see this white line, do, 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 do. It goes all the way around. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a real thin, lighter line that goes all the way around. This is a double lucky rock. And we keep them. We keep them on our desk or outside in our garden. Um, you should see my family. We have rocks all over our house and they're very important to us. Now, Miss Lauren, that story is very nice, but why are we talking about rocks today? Well, rocks, have you heard the expression, God is my rock? Maybe yes, maybe no. So God is my rock. Does that mean that God lives inside this rock? Hello, God, are you in there? No, <laughs> but it's an expression because God is like a rock. Or when we think of a rock, we can think of God because rocks can be found just about everywhere, all different kinds of rocks, right? And if you think about it, God's love is all around us, is everywhere, just like rocks. Okay, rocks are very strong. I mean, if I were to throw this, it wouldn't break, right? Um, they're very, very strong. And God's love is very strong for us, just like our faith in God is very strong. Now, there, this is just one type of rock. Here's another one from Maine, okay? But now one's bigger than the other. They're shaped differently. They have different markings. Rocks can be different colors, shapes, sizes, thickness, right? Big, tall, just like how God loves all of us. No matter what we look like on the outside, God always loves us. So when you see rocks, I want you to think of God and know that whatever your rock looks like, whatever you look like, or however you are, you are perfect and God loves you. All right, Mrs. Bear, we have an echo prayer. Will you say an echo prayer? That means you repeat after me. Are you ready? Here we go. Dear God, you are my rock. You are my rock. Yell it out. Thank you for your strength, for your love, 
for being with me everywhere. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you for listening. You know that God loves you. I love you. And Mrs. Bear loves you. <laughs> All right, so now let's stand up and look at our adults and say, may the good news of God's love be with you. Let us pass the peace. Let us join our hearts and minds in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, in all the seasons of our lives, we yearn for you. In every moment, in every event, we seek to find you. And in all the times in life, we strive to remember that you are with us. It is with grateful hearts that we turn to you today in prayer. Holy One, you know everything that we carry in our hearts. Help us to turn that all over to you so that our burden may find peace. When we are feeling that we must carry the weight of the world on our shoulders, help us to rely on you. When we are feeling alone and isolated, help us to experience your presence. We pray, Creator God, this day not only for ourselves, but for our neighbors and for our world. We pray for those who are afraid, uncertain, and struggling with depression and anxiety. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and grieving. There is so much loss around us, and our hearts are breaking. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are hungry and homeless and lost, and who feel hopeless. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the healthcare professionals in our community and around the world who are working so hard to keep us safe and to save us from this most awful virus. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are celebrating today something good in their lives, but worry that people will not want to celebrate with them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community and national leaders that they will not be led by ego, but by values in which our faith call us. Values like justice, inclusion, love, hope, and dedication. Oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this church that we will continue to be a community together, even when we are apart. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, there is nothing that can separate us from you. You are everywhere. You are with us. And so we ask for strength and courage for our journeys ahead and for the reassurance that you will keep inspiring us to be faithful, loving, justice-seeking disciples in all that we do and say. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Stones or rocks have a prominent place in the Judeo-Christian tradition and the references to them in the Bible are numerous, over 160 times for a rock and over 350 times for stone. In the New Testament, we of course know that it is a rock that is removed from the tomb to reveal the good news of the resurrection. Jesus said to Peter, Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And it was just a small rock 
from the slingshot of the youthful shepherd boy, David, that fell the Philistine Goliath. And then the Psalms are, of course, full of references to rocks, with the most common meaning being that God is our rock in life's most difficult times. God is our rock of safety and strength, and having faith and trust in God can be the everlasting and solid rock in our lives. You see, our lives are often filled with those powers of hell that seek to conquer us and conquer our society. Our lives and our world are often filled with the giant Philistines of evil and hate. Although the words we sang in our opening hymn, Here I Raise My Ebenezer, sound obscure to us, they do express the heartfelt gratitude we owe to God, who is our help and our guide in times of trouble. And friends, as a nation, we are currently in that time of trouble, but with our faith as our rock and with our baptismal promises calling us to follow Christ, we shall overcome the forces of evil, death, falsehood, and hate. Hear now these words from Scripture. From Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under the shelter of your wings. From 1 Samuel, from 1 Samuel, when the Philistines heard that the people of Israel had gathered at Mitzvah, the lords of Philistines went up against Israel. And when the people of Israel heard, heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The people of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us and pray that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. So Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel. But the Lord thundered with a mighty voice that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion and were routed before Israel. And the men of Israel went out mitzvah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as beyond beth -car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzpah and Jeshana and named it Ebenezer. For he said, thus far, not, thus far the Lord has helped us. From the prophet Isaiah, trust in the Lord forever, for, for in the Lord God you have an ever everlasting rock.
With such joy and beauty, our chancel choir sang, here we bring new water from the well so clear, for to worship God with this happy new year, sing levy do, sing levy do, the water and the wine. And didn't we all have such great hopes for this new year to finally leave 2020 behind us and to embark upon 2021 singing with clear water from the well and the wine and bright gold wires and bugles that do shine? Well, the epiphany that manifested itself on Wednesday, the actual day of epiphany, is that evil, hatred, bigotry, lies, and falsehoods, needless deaths throughout the past year, and failed presidential leadership do not know the bounds of a calendar. Thomas Jefferson once said, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance. And in America, this vigilance, this demand for liberty, this demand for democracy, this demand for freedom and justice began exactly 400 years ago. Where? Well, as le legend would have it, at a rock, at Plymouth Rock. This past November 11th was the 400th anniversary of the landing of the programs on the shores of America. They felt that they were on an errand in the wilderness to establish a city set upon a hill. Let us be perfectly clear from the beginning, however, and let there be no doubt that their vision was often flawed, for the American dream did not include justice for the indigenous Native Americans, nor for Africans brought to this new nation in shackles as slaves. Nonetheless, as Kate and I offered in a sermon in the fall, it is important to remember the vision that was clearly put forth in John Winthrop in his sermon a model of Christian charity delivered aboard the ship Arabella back in 1630. For this end, Winthrop proclaimed, we must be knit together in this work, for we must consider that we shall be as a city set upon a hill, the eyes of all people are upon us. Could John Winthrop have known that the eyes of the world would still be on the American experiment 400 years later? With the world's eyes wide open in utter disbelief, horror, and disgust at the disgrace of Wednesday's president-incited deadly mob insurrection by domestic terrorists at our U.S. Capitol. Winthrop continued in his sermon with a scripture passage that is well known by this congregation. Now the only way to provide for our posterity, Winthrop said, is to follow the counsel of Micah, to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God, and to be knit together in the work of the prophet Micah. That was the calling of the founders of this new nation. That was the calling of the faithful who established this congregation. And that, my friends, is still our calling. We are called to respond as citizens of this great nation, but also as people of faith, called to be obedient to God, yearning for justice for all people, both in this nation, but around our world. To our work as American citizens, we can and we must bring our faith as baptized Christians, seeking God's peace and God's love for all people. This past week, our nation was not 
the city set upon a hill for all the world to see and admire. It was a stain, it was sad, and it was an attack on our liberty, on our freedom, and on our democracy. Like our forebearers, the pilgrims, and our founding mothers and fathers, we are called as citizens and as people of faith to be vigilant in the defense of liberty and justice. If we do not, who will? The civic responsibility of people of faith runs deep in the DNA of the Congregational Church and the United Church of Christ. And that DNA has its origins not only in the familiar words of the prophet Micah, but also in the more pointed words of Micah. Hear this, Micah said, you rulers and kings and tyrants of the house of Jacob and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build a Zion with blood and Jerusalem with wrong. Because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins. The American ruler Thomas Jefferson also said, in matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. This is the time for people of faith to stand firmly like a rock on our faith's principle of justice, equality, inclusion, and hope for all people. And these principles have been under a brazen and continuing assault and attack, not just with the mob of this past week, but let us acknowledge and be perfectly clear that these principles have been under assault for the past four years. As people of faith and as citizens, we must be vigilant and not only in the face of attacks on our nation's democracy, but also vigilant against words and attacks filled with hatred, bigotry, division, and falsehood. As people of faith, we must stand like a rock on the principle of equality. We must stand like a rock on the principle of inclusion. We must stand on a, like a rock on the principle of welcome. We must stand like a rock on the principle of peace and nonviolence. We must stand like a rock on the principle of justice for all. Pulitzer Prize-winning historian John Meacham wrote the following in his book, The Soul of America, The Battle for Our Better Angels. He writes, the American promise has not delivered for many blacks, Jews, Latinos, Asian Americans, myriad immigrant groups, and even some whites as well. Hate crimes, acts of violence against people, or property based on race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, ethnicity, or gender identity are a growing problem. A bipartisan group in the House has warned, quote, as uncertainty rises, we have seen hatred unleashed. When was Meacham's book first published? 2018, therefore probably written in 2016 and 2017. The battle for the soul of America was not just a one-day event on Wednesday, instigated by domestic thugs and terrorists. No, it has been a battle that has been raging for many years now, and it is a battle that is calling people of faith calling for better angels to truly live out our baptismal promises to work for a better world of justice and peace for all of God's children.
Earlier in the fall, Kate and I shared with you an email exchange with one of our members who sent this worth repeating observation about this beloved family of faith that we call First Church. He wrote, there is an unbelievable amount of need and stress in the U.S. and in the world. We need everyone to pull together and First Church is certainly leading the way. Love and faith will prevail. Pivot. Is that the word that this family of faith needs at this moment? I would argue not. I would argue that First Church simply needs to stay the course in its many ministries of love, justice, and social change. First Church needs to stay the course and hold on to other words like courage, perseverance, endurance, vision, strength, commitment, hope, compassion. First Church needs to stay the course and stand on the rock of our faith, a faith that is calling us, perhaps now more than ever, to reaffirm our baptismal promises to love God and neighbor with heart, with soul, with mind, and strength. We are called by God to love our neighbors, young and old, near and far, who this day are suffering, suffering from hunger, homelessness, economic injustice, suffering from the evils of hatred and bigotry, suffering from hatred like the Jews will not replace us, suffering from the evils of racial injustice, environmental injustice, and the threat to our future generations of global warming, suffering from failed political leadership and an indifference to the poor and to the marginalized and the outcast. You see, First Church knows that it can't solve all the world's problems, but it also knows that we must always be vigilant in the defense of our, of our nation's liberty and democracy, and to be even more vigilant to defend the rights of God's most vulnerable children. Therefore, let us not delay Friends, our rock is the strength we find in God to work tirelessly for justice and peace. Our rock is our faith. Our rock is our God. Amen. Now let us join our voices in our closing hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Friends, with the global pandemic and now with the disturbing events of this past week, our, loves, our lives sometimes seem totally unhinged. 
feeling like we have been inundated by a whelming flood. But as people of faith, we have two powerful symbols to remind us of who we are, whose we are, and what we are called to do, to remind us that we are called to live and to love. Baptism, baptism is a promise that you or your parents on your behalf made with God that you would serve God and follow the commandments to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And in baptism, God also promises to help, comfort, and guide you in your life. God promises to be a refuge and a rock of protection no matter what life throws your way. After we have finished this prayer, we invite you to dip your hand in some water and then perhaps hold on to your rock or fi find one later as a reminder of how you are deeply loved by God on this journey of life. When they say you are alone, these waters say you are with. When they say you are too broken, damaged goods, too wounded, not enough. These waters say, enough, beloved, enough. When they say you are too brown, child, too black, too queer, child, too fat. These waters say, beautiful, child, beautiful. When they say you are too addicted, stranger, immigrant, alien, criminal, too far gone, stranger, these waters say home, neighbor, welcome home. When the world appears to be crumbling around us and we are afraid, these rocks say trust. When people say there is no hope and that all is lost, these, these rocks, rocks say, say life. When the world seems to say you are alone, these, these rocks, rocks and, and this water say you belong here and, and you are loved. In Germany in the 1930s and 1940s, Lutheran pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer captured the timeless question when he said, who is Christ for us today? Who is Christ for us today? Well, today we are saying that Christ is our rock. Christ is our rock of justice. Christ is our rock of peace. Christ is our rock of vision, hope, endurance, and love. Christ is the rock of our lives. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen.